Tonight on 2020, love, marriage, and an intimate medical mystery. Nobody can tell you what it is you have or how to treat it. Why can't millions of women bear having sex? You make this decision to get married knowing that you couldn't have intercourse. What lies behind these medical mysteries? Here's John Stossel. Good evening. Elizabeth Vargas is off tonight. What would turn a couple's bedroom into what she feels is a torture chamber? It's an intimate problem few women talk about, even with their closest friends. And worse, it's often a mystery to their own doctors. Our doctor, Tim Johnson, does know about it. So here's his report. It does include some very blunt discussion of this surprisingly common medical condition. Let's make love. In the movies and on television, everybody seems to love having sex. <laughs> or do they? It is not a yeast infection. One of the ladies in this Sex in the City episode can't have sex because she has a burning pain down there. So her doctor prescribes an antidepressant. Oh, ha, ha, it's so funny. My vagina is depressed. But for many women, sexual intercourse is no laughing matter, including these three, Chris, Allison, and Sarah. For years, they suffered in silence with an embarrassing secret. They did not feel pleasure with sex, they felt excruciating pain. It was very, very dry and just extremely, extremely painful. Intense burning. Almost like it felt like the tissue was raw. The best way to describe it is having sandpaper rubbed on an open wound. And they say that unbearable vaginal pain can extend beyond sex to everyday activities like walking. Even light contact from their blue jeans can be agonizing to bear. Riding a bike, sitting for long periods, something just as light as touching the area with a Q-tip will you know, send women kind of flying off the exam table. But all the women say what's almost harder than the physical pain is the emotional toll of suffering from such a mysterious condition without a clear diagnosis. Having doctors tell you there's nothing wrong, even though you know there's something wrong, it's beyond frustrating and it's heartbreaking. 25-year-old Sarah Fontaine of New York City went to 15 different doctors in a desperate search for answers. Some of these doctors said it was psychological. I was either on medicine, being treated for something I didn't have, or I was being told that it's all in your head. I'd look around and say there's, you know, there's no way that everybody's walking around with this kind of pain. Chris Veasley of Providence, Rhode Island, also struggled to find a diagnosis. Remarkably, five years into her relationship with her college sweetheart, Melvin, they still had never had sexual intercourse. It was just too painful. But it didn't stop them from getting married. I guess that's real love, huh? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah I think that's, it was a very difficult decision. Sex is an important part of a relationship, but it's not the most important part of a relationship. Still, Chris and Melvin say they found other ways to be sexually intimate. But the desperate search for a diagnosis for this inexplicable pain can either pull a couple closer together or tear them apart. Sarah and her husband, Afshin, say their marriage was seriously strained by her mysterious sexual pain. All the results are coming back negative, and he would just automatically assume it was him. You know, I'm not attracted to him anymore. And the men aren't the only ones doubting themselves. Allison Nugent of Tacoma Park, Maryland. Part of what makes you a woman is having female sexual organs. And when they're not working properly, it's kind of an assault on your ego as a woman. It was an assault on her marriage, too. You're very open about the fact that this was part of the reason you got divorced. It certainly added a tremendous amount of stress to the marriage. Handling a chronic pain condition is difficult no matter what, but handling a chronic pain condition when nobody can tell you what it is you have or how to treat it is just, you know, beyond the pale. But finally, Allison found a doctor who could treat her mystifying pain. Dr. Andrew Goldstein, who runs the Center for Vulvovaginal Disorders in Washington, D.C. Just by telling her that we have a name for it, uh, it's treatable, is really uh, a load off their minds. Dr. Goldstein is a pioneer in the new field of sexual pain disorders. He says there are real physical reasons why sex is so painful for some women. 
a lot of these problems are actually relatively easy to treat if, if you know how to evaluate them. And it's a problem for a lot of women. Dr. Goldstein says an astounding 20 million American women will suffer from sexual pain disorders at some point in their lives. How many people are doing what you're doing? I would say that probably only about 30 to 40 physicians in the United States really have um, extensive training in uh, female sexual pain. He says that may explain why the average woman with sex pain sees seven different doctors before she gets a diagnosis. The vast majority of women who have sexual pain have pain at the opening of the vagina. This problem has long been a true medical mystery. Now the main causes are known. Surprisingly, Dr. Goldstein says the number one cause is birth control pills. Birth control pills lower two hormones in the body, estrogen and testosterone. And that can lead to dryness and thinness in the vagina, which can cause pain. For some women, that pain can be relieved by a simple adjustment to their birth control. The second most common cause of sexual pain is actually tightness of the muscles that surround the vagina. In Sarah Fontaine's case, she went to physical therapist Amy Stein to stretch her tight pelvic muscles. I tell patients that um, similar to just like a neck pain, a neck spasm, but it's in the pelvic floor area, what we have to do is go in and lengthen the muscles. Some doctors are even using Botox to relax the muscles so physical therapists can better stretch them. And the third major reason for pain comes from too many nerve endings at the opening of the vagina. It's not a very large area. It's about the size of a large postage stamp. It turns out, coincidentally, that all three women we talked to had this nerve problem. Sarah found relief with some hormonal cream which soothed her nerve ending. I am able to have intercourse now, finally, and it's not painful. As for Allison and Chris, they had to have a small surgical procedure to actually remove the nerve endings. That simple outpatient surgery cures the problem in 90% of the women who have it. Everything, everything is working fine. Everything is working fine. Yeah. Allison is happily remarried, and thanks to the surgery, she was able to conceive and give birth to a baby boy named James. And what would you want to say to women who are suffering from this problem? That it's important to get treatment and to talk to your doctor about it, but if your doctor doesn't believe you have a problem, that it's important to talk to someone who does understand. I don't think Faith can do that one. Can she do this for herself? Yes. Put it in there. And Chris and Melvin, the couple who never had sexual intercourse together, they've had pain-free sex for more than eight years now, and the living proof two beautiful daughters appropriately named Grace and Faith. <laughs> oh, oh, she high did five. It. Yeah. High five. <laughs>